Hey everybody and welcome to the second video of the VB.NET 2013 tutorial series. In this video I want to go through some of the basics. So let's go through the difference between a console application and a GUI based application. We're then going to have a look at the interface for Visual Studio 2013. Move on to our first program. We're going to go through a set of commands specific to console programs and then a couple of properties again for consoles and then finally we're going to try and bring it all together in the end. Okay, and I think the best way to start this off is let's have a look at this program right here. This here is what you would call a console based application. Okay, the reason is this mimics old computers which were only controlled by keyboards mainly. Okay, and the good thing about this is it's line by line. Okay, it's really easy to follow. There's not much on the screen, so all it can do is talk to us and we can talk to it a little bit. Okay, and then after enough of this, we're going to move on to GUI programs later on because there's a lot more going on in GUI programs. A GUI program, I keep saying that word, is anything with the, something you can click on, such as buttons or things you can drag or files or whatever like that. And it stands for a graphical user interface. So that's something we can interact with the mouse as well as the keyboard. All right, and I think we're going to stick with console applications to start with because it's an easy way to get into programming. So first of all, let's get Visual Studio open. We're going to go down to our programs list. Okay, we're going to scroll right to the bottom, find Visual Studio 2013, and there's VS Express 2013. Crank or open. And this is what you're going to see every time you open up Visual Studio fresh. You're going to get start page on the left and empty solution explorer on the right. Okay, and this is mainly the screen for when you're programming as well. Let's quickly go through the top to bottom. So at the very top, we've got the menu, which has got a few things that you're probably used to, such as file and edit. All right, but we're not going to go through them today. We've got the standard toolbar, which has got saving and opening and playing your program for the first time. You've got a quick search for help up the top right. And if you haven't signed in already, you can do it just here. Okay, so you can collaborate and things like that with other people. This start page actually becomes your coding page, okay, where you do all of your coding once we create a project. So we're going to go through that in a bit of detail in a second. And on the right, again, doesn't have much, but this displays every single file available in our project at the moment. And a project is known as a solution. Okay? At the bottom, we have the status bar. And it hasn't got much on the moment. It just says ready. Okay? But if it's doing things such as building your program or saving your program, it's going to tell you where it's up to. Okay, and I think the best way to start this, let's get programming and let's create a new project. So let's go to the left and click on new project. And we're going to get this new screen. On the left, we have the different templates or programming languages that we can use. So as I said before, Visual Studio isn't just Visual Basic. We've got C Sharp and we've got C++ as well as other ones. But let's stick to Visual Basic and let's stick to console applications. So make sure you click that first. Before you click OK, let's name our program. I absolutely must emphasize naming your program before you run into it. Now, this is going to be the first program you've ever written, and I think it's always good to start with Hello World. Okay, I think any good programmer should start at this point. Okay, the location is where it's going to be saved, and please, for the love of God, know where that is. Okay, don't lose your projects. I'm going to click Browse. Okay, mine are going to be saved in Documents, in vb.net. Okay, I've already got a project called Hello World. Whoops, I'm going to delete that quickly. There we go. Whoops. Sorry about that, everyone. A bit of confusion for you. Okay, we'll leave it at that, and I'm going to go OK. And it's going to make me a brand spanking blank project once this is done. And there we go. So as I said, on the left-hand side, we have the code portion of our application. Now, because it is a console application, we don't get a graphical part of our program, okay? And we'll worry about that when we get to the GUI programs. On the right, the Solution Explorer has all the files inside of our project or our solution. So you can see Solution Hello World. We've got the project called Hello World. And then you'll always have three things. The, my project, which is your settings, app.config, and then module1.vb. And module1.vb is where all of your code lives for your program. Okay, as you can see on the left-hand side, it says up the top, module1.vb. As you open up more pages, this is going to open up more tabs across the top. Now, let's start with the coding. Let's start with a very simple program. 
don't worry about how it works or why it works. Let's just have a look at Hello World. Okay. Once you've written your code, we always press play at the top, or the shortcut for that on the keyboard is F5, if you want to know that. I generally use the shortcut, but for this program, I'll press start, and there we go. There's our first program, Hello World. And if you want to close your program, just press the Enter key, and it should shut it down. All right, so let's go through this in a little bit of detail. Let's get rid of these lines, and let's have a look at a blank file. Now, this is just a text editor. You can do whatever you want. You can even delete the stuff that's already there, okay? A lot of people don't think that it's a text editor, but it is. It's nothing fancy. It just colors in your words. Okay, at the very top, you've got module module one. And that basically says to Visual Basic, I'm inside module one, and code can live inside me. Okay, that's as simple as it says. This next bit, submain, is where Visual Basic will start executing your console application. It will always start at submain. Okay, once it hits end sub, Visual Basic will know that your program's finished and shut it all down, and that's it. Okay. So the first uh, line of code that I put in there, all of your lines of codes when you're talking to the console will start with console and dot. Yeah, and there's lots of stuff that we can use here. These are all different types of things that we can do. Right? And the simplest one to always start with is write line. That allows us to write things to the screen. It could be words, it could be numbers, it can be anything really. What you've got to do with this though is open up a bracket on the end and in the quotes you can put whatever you want to write to the screen. So I can put welcome to my series. And it will just write welcome to my series on the screen, wherever it's up to. Now if I hit play at this point, it doesn't do much. It just flickers on the screen. Now the reason that is, is because this pro Visual Basic is trying to execute this program as quickly and efficiently as it possibly can. So as I said before, it, programming languages always start at line one, which for us is sub-main. And then it goes to line two, which is console.writeline, which means it'll write welcome to my series on the console. And then I told you before, the third line that hits end sub will shut your program down. Well, in this case, because it's end sub, which matches up to main, it will shut down our program. Okay, so we need a line of code in there that's going to make our program pause and just wait until the user is ready to move on. Okay, and that's when I brought in the next console command read line okay now read line is actually very powerful it's actually a lot more powerful than we're about to use it but the simplistic way to use read line is to wait until the user presses the enter key so if I start my program it's done the right line which is welcome to my series it's now on the next line and it's read lining so in other words it's waiting for me to press enter so if I press enter it will shut down my program and to emphasize how this works if I copy this three times so if I put read line and then read line again, so we've got one, two, and three read lines, that should mean I have to press one, two, three times before it goes away. Okay, and there are your basic commands. There's two commands already, right line and read lines. Okay, and welcome to Visual Basic. Let's introduce a couple more commands at this point, okay, because this is pretty basic. All we can do is write and then pause the program. There's a couple more things that we can do at this point. Let's try this one, console.write, a little bit different. Let's put hello world, okay, no one, that. we've got a write, then a write line, and a read line, and let's see what that does. Everyone see that hello world appears on the exact same line as welcome to my series. So what write does, compared to write line, is write will write the text on the screen, and then stop, and then write line, writes the text to the screen and goes to the next line. To emphasize that, let's just get rid of this right line. And you can see the cursor, or that flashing thing, which is known as a cursor, sits on the exact same line. If I press enter, it closes my application. So if I change it into a right line, the cursor is on the next bit. Okay? So there is two different commands. We're going to use right and right line at different times. It depends on what you want to do. Okay, the next command, which I think is quite handy to use, I'm going to do something after my read line. Let's do another right line. Welcome to my new page. Okay, and I'm going to do a read line. So essentially what it's saying is the computer's going to write, hello world, pause, 
and then go welcome to my new page and then pause. So let's try that. Hello world, welcome to my new page. Now what I'm trying to show off here is this next command called clear. So if I want to write hello world to the screen and then when they press the enter key I want to wipe the screen fresh and start at the top of the page again we use console.clear and it will just wipe the screen clean. So hello world, welcome to my new page. Bingo. And that's pretty straightforward. There's only one more command that I want to show you. Let's say I wanted to write welcome to my page in the dead center of the screen. There's a couple of ways I could do that. Okay, The first way using what we've already learned is do lots of empty right lines and they look like this. Okay, That's an empty right line and what that'll do is just give us one vertical space. So if I just do three of them just to show off what I mean by vertical space. Hello world, press enter. So it's maybe one, two, three spaces at the top there. Okay, so if I want this in the dead center, I can keep adding right lines until we're roughly in the middle. Nope, need more. I'm just copying and pasting. Sorry if this is too quick for you, everyone. That's roughly the middle, I would say, and I need to push it across. Okay, so lots of spaces. Let's see how that goes. Ooh, almost there. A little bit more. There you go. Almost the dead center of the screen. It's probably not perfect, but it's roughly there. That's one way we could put it in the middle of the screen. Okay, I just showed you the very long way. Okay, there is a very quick way. Okay, it's using another command called set cursor position. I'm going to revert all of this silly things I just did. Get rid of all my right lines. Okay, and I'm going to show you this new command. Console dot set cursor position. Now this is a bit of a different command. It accepts two numbers. Okay. Don't worry about how I know their numbers. Just know that it accepts two numbers. And you can see one's called left and the other one's called top. Left is how far to the left should we set the cursor. So let's say the number is 10. The cursor will be pushed across 10 spaces. And top is the same sort of deal. It's how many spaces down we want to put the cursor. So if I go roughly, let's say, I should have counted what I had before, but let's go 10, comma, to get to top. And then let's go oh, 40. All right, so it's going to go across 10 and down 40. Let's see how that goes. Wow, that's way too far down. And not far enough across. <laughs> okay, I got them backwards anyway. I want to go across 40 and down 10. Stupid me. Let's try that instead. Close. I want to go down one more and back a little bit. So let's go back a little bit. So 35 and let's go down one more. Yep, looking better. Let's go down to 30. That's pretty much perfect. So in one line of code, set cursor position, we've effectively moved the cursor. So the cursor gets moved across and then down. And that's where your next right line or right will start from. So we'll start writing the text at that spot. Okay, so they are very, very handy when you want to put different elements on the screen. You like you want a list on the right hand side or you want something underneath on the bottom of the screen. It just really depends on what you want to do. Now all of this is all well and good. These are all the commands that we're going to use to interact with the console. Okay, right line, right, read line, clear, and set cursor position. They're the basic ones that we're going to stick with. Now there are two properties that we are going to deal with. Okay, properties are a little bit different to commands. Let's have a quick look. I'm just going to wipe this and start new. Start with just hello world. Let me just go console and dot. Now you'll see there's ones with little purple boxes and there's ones with a little spanner. Now the little purple boxes you may have guessed by now represent a command. All right? Or some kind of action. A command is something that needs to be done. Okay? A property has a little spanner on top of it and a property is something that we can change now what I mean by that and this is probably the easiest example let's change the background color okay there are no brackets when it comes to properties you actually have to put an equal sign after them to change the property okay so to use commands we put brackets like this and to use properties we put an equal sign Right. After the equals, Visual Studio is really nice to us. It knows what background color is, 
and it's asking us what color do we want to change into. Okay, so let's say, for example, a really obvious one, let's start with yellow. So if I just double click on that, hit play, there we go, it's really hard to read, but it's really obvious what it's doing, and I can change that if I want. Let's try magenta. That's not magenta. That's magenta. Something a little bit more obvious. But here you go, that's how we change a property. Now background color, as you may have guessed, change what's behind the text when it's written. And there is also the opposite of that, we can change the foreground color. So remember, equal sign after it. And then let's go black, for example. And there you go. And that's how you use properties. And we can use these multiple times. So if we go foreground color equals, let's say red, and then write something to the screen. and then play that, well that's really hard to read, but you get the point, hello world, this is something else. Now, a lot of people don't like how this, per this magenta, I suppose we'll say, just colors in what we've written to the screen. Perhaps we want the entire screen to be filled with magenta instead. Okay, this is where we can use a property in conjunction with a color, with the background color that is. All right, and this is the fun part. So, let's say we've just change the background color and we've just if you just use the clear command straight afterwards colors in the entire screen that color also known as the buffer okay I won't get into that right now now there's a couple of things I didn't explain first of all properties they're essentially a state okay so if you change the color to magenta for the rest of the program that background color is going to be magenta okay however if we change the color here, let's change it to blue. Now let me separate this a little bit because it's starting to look a bit confusing. It's getting really cluttered. Okay, so set the background color to magenta and clear the screen. We should color the whole thing in magenta. We change the text color to black and write hello world, which is perfect. Change the foreground color to red, so that's the text color. Change the background of the text to blue, and then we write this is something else. So something a little bit different for you. And there you go. So we can actually use them. It's a state machine. So if I write something more to the screen after that, it doesn't matter how far down it is. Something more, because I'm so interesting. It's still going to be written in blue, because the last thing I said was it was blue. Okay, and that's the whole point. The second thing is I haven't been demonstrating this autocomplete. Okay, I've been typing stuff in like console lots. I can actually type in the first couple of letters. See how it's highlighted console and I haven't even typed in the E? If I press the dot, it will fill in console for me. And see how it's highlighted right line? This is something even better. If I press the space bar, it writes that word in for me. Or, even better, because it's a, cons um, a command, and I know I have to put a bracket after it, if you just press bracket, automatically writes that in for you. And this is why Visual Studio is so good and a lot of developers still use it, even though, you know, it's made by Microsoft, I should say. As for a property, we know it has to have an equals after it. So if I click or move my cursor on top of black uh, background color and press equals, again, it fills it in for me. So there's some of the tricks when it comes to programming. And so essentially, there's our two properties that we're gonna deal with, foreground color and background color. We're going to do lots of stuff with those. I want you to have a play around with the right line, right, read line, clear, set cursor position, foreground color and background color. Learn what they do, learn how to use them because the next video that we're going to do, we're going to introduce variables, which is probably the biggest staple point of programming that you'll come by at the start. All right, good luck in, um, interfacing with your console program. The next one, we're going to add a little bit of interactivity with the user because right now, our program's a little bit boring they only do exactly what we tell them to, nothing changes, which is incredibly boring. So for the next video, we're going to move on to interacting with the user a little bit more. So see you in the next video, everybody. Good luck.